Today I'm responding to Stephanie Sue and the video she made about me entitled Why I'm Scared of Nikocado Avocado. Now, firstly, this video here is not a hateful video. It's not a hate video. So I'm asking you, please don't go send bullying, harassment, hate, anything of that nature to anybody involved in result or in response to my video here, okay? I'm telling you right up front, I'm against those things, I'm denouncing them, and I'm asking you, just be respectful. Now, obviously, everyone's been asking me, where's your video? We've been waiting, are you gonna respond? But honestly, because of the holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year's, and how time sensitive everything was, I decided to wait just a little bit until I felt it was an appropriate time to speak. I have a lot to cover in this video. I'm gonna go over every single aspect and address it head on, all right? So I'm asking you, please listen to as much as you can, as much as your schedules, your time allows for, because everything is equally important in my view. What I'm gonna tell you at the beginning isn't more or less critical than what I'm gonna tell you at the end. All right, I have screenshots, I have photos, I have audio clips, I have various pieces of the story that Stephanie decided to leave out of hers. So let's go. The first thing I'd like to address are the photos in her house. Now again, I don't know what's more important, this or the voice messages or the, I'm gonna tackle this first, get it over with, because this is what I see repeating a lot. There's no, no excuse to be taking photos of someone's home without their permission. Why would you be taking photos? That's creepy, that's stalkerish. Are you dangerous? Are you gonna break in and steal a lamp? Are, are you gonna leak her ad? Like, why would you take photos? And in Stephanie's video, she implied, well, she said that she had gone to the bathroom, she used the restroom, and when she came back, she had checked the security footage to see that I was taking photos of her house without her knowledge. And therefore, it made her question her safety, the overall peace of mind in her home, and that's a lie. That is 100% a lie. You know what the viewers will see? They will see upon arrival, the moment I stepped into her home, she gave me a whole house tour. I don't know if I went to every room, but I walked through, oh gosh, five, six, seven different places. She took me from room to room, bathroom to bathroom, bedroom to bedroom, even outside, to the pool, to the swing, everything. You will also see that upon arrival, she pointed out various pieces of furniture. And I asked her, as a fellow YouTuber, that's a beautiful couch, where's that from? Oh, it's from this place. Oh, that's a beautiful light fixture. A whole house tour. And she was very excited to show it off to me, as I would be too. It's a very luxurious house, one of the most expensive houses I've ever seen. You'll also see on this security footage that we had a very long, long FaceTime with my husband, Orlin, while I was in her home. And during that FaceTime, she proceeded to show off her refrigerator, her microwave that slides out or something from the counter, the, the marble countertop. She pulled out her phone and said, oh, this is the type of marble I had. And then she went to the stove and showed us the stove. Oh, this is Thermador this, Thermador that. She showed us the, the water spigot that's used to put uh, water into pots. She showed Orlin the sofa, the lights. She gave him his own version of a house tour. And she's claiming that I was taking photos for, no, for an odd reason that she has no idea what it was for. And that's what made her feel unsafe. But she was sitting right there as I took a photo watching me. Watching me. What she's saying here is so incriminating. She's making it look like I did something without her knowledge that therefore threatened her peace of mind or implied the overall safety of her home was in jeopardy. Stephanie, you painted the stage for your viewers that you had no idea I was taking photos and that was the reason you're questioning your safety. That's the only thing you supposedly had on me. And you knew that probably wasn't enough to emotionally sway everybody, which is why you made half of your video discussing sexual assault, PTSD, the Me Too movement, all of which have nothing to do with our collaboration. It is so ethically wrong to insinuate that I was taking photos while you were in the bathroom and you had no idea as to why that was the case. That is deliberate manipulation in order to sell a story. And out of the few photos I took, they're only of the same room, the kitchen and the seating area. 
I didn't walk anywhere else and take any other photos. I wasn't looking around for suspicious things. I was admiring her furniture, admiring her. And she says, I don't have fancy light fixtures. I'm sorry. That's the first house I've been in that looks like that. This is a multi-million dollar home. I was impressed. I was happy for you. And I think you were happy to show it off to me. That shouldn't be used as material as to why you felt threatened by me. Absolutely not. Why would you lie about such a... Why would you lie about something like that? I don't understand. Why would you lie about it? I even took a selfie. I even took a selfie. Look at me. And I sent it to my husband. Oh! Oh! And let me play you. Let me play you what I sent to my husband. Here's a screenshot of Orlin watching us do the house tour. Look, I'm literally pointing toward the couch. This is innocent stuff. This was, this was like fellowship. This was conversation. Oh, look at my house. Where, look at my sofa. Where's it from? It looks beautiful. Orlin says, oh, I love it. You know, we are YouTubers too. It's not like I'm the milkman coming to rob a lamp from her. A lot of these YouTubers, they have security systems that talk to them. You know how like yours just like make some message on your phone, but then you have to open it. You have to see, and it does it like every time someone walks by, which is annoying, but theirs will be like, it's a intercom sound speaker like throughout every room in the house. And the lady will go, someone's at the front door. And they'll go, someone's at the front gate or someone's out back or someone opened the second story window and she talks to you and stuff i really want that that's really nice that's what i sent that's what that's what i sent him why would you lie about something like this when you knew you get it's not like i walked into her house like this The next thing I'd like to talk about is Veronica Wang. Veronica Wang is a fellow mukbanger here on YouTube. She's a YouTuber. And this lady, Veronica, had problems on the internet with a bunch of other mukbangers one year ago. And Stephanie is saying that I'm pressuring her to talk about what happened. She's saying that she would never want to bring her up. She never brought her up before. And she said, quote, I'd have no reason to. She's making it seem like I'm trying to drag poor Stephanie into spilling the beans about Veronica, even though she would never have it in her heart to do so. I think she said, oh, it was something about pink hair dye, you know, as she's laughing and giggling. You know, why did she start laughing all of a sudden? It wasn't very funny. And this is a lie, too. She wants her viewers to think she'd never take part in a discussion about Veronica. Well, she forgot to mention and show in her text messages, there's my other phone, that she asked us, me and Zach, to take part in a multi-video documentary about Veronica Wang, Shane Dawson style. Let me read you what she said. This is at the end of August, a couple of months ago, three or four months ago, and this is what she said. Hi, so I have a wild idea. Veronica Wang is going to be in Los Angeles and want to meet me to talk. I haven't run the idea by her, but I'm pretty sure she'll be on board considering everything. I want to do a more serious docu-series type video, Shane Dawson type, with Veronica. Highlighting not only everything that happened with Shook Bang and including what happened between Veronica and I, but also all the personal conflicts that were involved. It would be a good cliffhanger to whatever you have to say to her afterwards, yada yada. I'm texting Zach at, at the same time personally, and I'll show you those texts in a minute. Zach says, I'm not involved in that drama, but I'll help out wherever you need me to. She wanted Zach to be in this video, and Zach doesn't even speak. And he wasn't even on YouTube yet. <gasps> okay, or maybe he was, but no one knew him. Sorry, Zach. Um, and then Stephanie says, so essentially, I want to address everything that she did that hurt everybody involved, starting from Shook Bang, and maybe finally get her to understand that she wasn't the victim here. Um, and I would also like to showcase a side of you that shows you're not just here for the drama, but you're here for the underdogs and the words she said against you hurt you and not just angered you. I would also like people to see a glimpse of vulnerability from Nikocado, obviously to your comfort. I was just hoping to be an unbiased voice. And this is what I said to her. I said, 
It honestly seems like a little much. I don't live there, I'd have to fly there, and if anything, a Shane Dawson documentary, that's many different days of filming and shooting. I'm not really interested in spending weeks there for this. Yeah, a collab where we eat and chat, but that's different than a documentary. It would be hard for you, Stephanie, to be that unbiased voice considering you were Veronica's friend and it was your own videos that started Shook Bang making videos, as well as the supposed advice you gave to Veronica to delete them. Like at this point in time, no, no one even knows you stopped being friends or that she treated you so poorly. So it will come across to the viewers as you trying to bring her back to being liked by everyone again, which could backfire. She never even apologized to you or anybody, so I don't think it's a good idea, just my thoughts. She's like, oh, okay, well, I'm still thinking about it, but I'll keep you guys up to date if anything comes into fr fruition, yada, yada, yada. I said, it's an interesting idea, but I think it would only work with someone who wasn't involved. And we'd have to know up front that she's willing to apologize and admit she screwed up. Otherwise, it's a waste of everybody's time. And I say, it's a quick question for Stephanie. I know you said you were unable to collaborate with me personally, but because you didn't want anything drama related on your channel for prof professional purposes, so how how do you think a video of this nature would do with both me and Veronica together, the literal dividing force to any existing drama that led us to not collaborate in the first place? So in Stephanie's video saying she doesn't know how to say no to me, she's so afraid for she said no to me lots of different times. She said no to me over dinner and said she doesn't want any drama on her channel. She has everything is very um, monitored and filtered and controlled through her lens of Stephanie Sue. And I would bring in the drama and she didn't want that. And I understood that. And I had also asked before that, a year, a year before that, saying, hey, I'll come to Los Angeles, let's collab. She said no. She showed that text and I think she showed it. I can show it. So she's told me no twice before. And I said, and the reasons were because you're full of drama. Then Stephanie said, but I do feel that her reaching out to me is her, hopefully, trying to apologize for everything that went down. In terms of the video, if it is to even happen, I'm hoping it will be a chance for us and everyone else she wronged finally get our apologies and closures, but also have a more meaningful and productive conversation about everything that happened. I never really got 100% clear my name after what happened, so Stephanie was interested in talking about it for her own personal reasons, and you never got your apologies, and she never accepted what she did so I was hoping we could walk away from it with this closure but I don't want to feel like all of us will come out holding hands or anything but maybe it's for all of us to air out what happened in a productive manner so that none of us have this looming over our heads any longer so this has been what eight months nine months I can't do math a very long time since it happened and it's still looming over her head as this group text was going down I asked Zach personally I said between you and I what do you think he says I'm with you on this one only because she never really addressed it when it was all going down and no one knows her and Veronica had beef. And I said, exactly. He goes, I feel like she's trying to play mediator when she can't approach it that way since she's part of it. And I said, she was silent that entire time. She's giving Veronica a lot of credit here, an opportunity for all of us to right our wrongs and dig, dig deep into meaningful conversation, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, um, what makes you think Veronica is even up for that? It's one thing to do a collab like Trisha where we eat and giggle. I said, it's another thing to investigate all over again. Zach said, exactly. It might actually backfire and start even more shit once you get to talking about the juicy shit because I, I'm sure she's still gonna feel offended. All right. Still feels offended. Can I tell you when I first met Stephanie Sue out for dinner, we were there for what, like four, five, six hours? Do you think we were talking about the weather? <laughs> talking about how to make an omelet? Talking about what our favorite designer bag is? It was Stephanie Sue going on and 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 on about all of this stuff between her and Veronica. I didn't even ask her. Zach didn't even ask her. She was boom vomiting it out. She had this boiling up, like she says, looming over her heads. It's still looming over her he head then. And let me tell you, when I just two weeks ago was in Los Angeles, it was still looming over her head then too. And I'm going to get into that. And then I said, it's just going to turn to a big housewives fight in the middle of filming. Zach says, and then she's going to go social and say, I confirmed everything she thought about you. So basically Veronica wanted to meet Zach privately. Zach's never talked to her before. Veronica followed him, then unfollowed him, followed him, then unfollowed him. Reached out asking to like sit down with Zach so that he could bring me to bring herself to me as he did with Trisha Paytas. She wanted that for herself too. And I actually talked about it in a video. I said, yeah, the next time I see you, you're gonna have a black eye. I don't think Veronica would actually hit him, but we were just saying, you don't know anything about this lady. She is crazy too. And then Zach's like, yeah, I'll be dead or if I disagree with her. And then Zach says, 
I feel like Stephanie is trying to get involved in the drama without being involved in the drama. When she pitched the idea to me earlier, it threw me way off. Let me repeat that to you again. I feel like Stephanie is trying to get involved in the drama without being involved in the drama. And then he sent me a screenshot, a screenshot of his text messages with Stephanie. And this is what it says. Zach says to Stephanie, it's really up to Nick since I wasn't even involved to it begin with. And then Stephanie goes, I think I'm gonna do it regardless with her since it all started with Shook Bang and her and then I was personally brought into it. I would obviously love it if he got involved with me. This is someone who's saying, what did she say? I would never want to talk about her. Nothing even happened. Nick's trying to start something out of nowhere. This lady has so much upset feelings against Veronica Wang. And let me tell you, it's a lot more than just pink hair dye that she was willing to make a Shane Dawson documentary. Four part, two part, five part series, hours long. You think people make documentaries over hair dye? <laughs> and then uh, Zach says she never even replied to the last text. He says, I don't think she liked it pretty much when I said she shouldn't do it unless you're in it. Yeah, you don't want drama on your channel if it's just me, but you do want channel drama on your channel if it's me and Veronica. Now that is typical Stephanie Sue. She's done this to me a couple times and I'm gonna get into that as well, but let me just tell you now. Stephanie Sue, out of nowhere, after telling me, no, I can't collab with you because you're too much drama, pitched me an idea to collab with me, Honey Eats, Kimmy, and herself to put on her channel. Honey Eats doesn't like her. Kimmy doesn't like her. I didn't really like her. I didn't even know her. I felt that she was very self-serving. Doesn't take the time to get to know Kimmy or me or Honey. S you know, ignores us, stands us up, but only asks for us, only reaches out to us if she wants something out of us. And she had done that before. I might flash the text here or get into that later. Um, and I'm like, that's what I'm saying. She I'm too much drama for your channel, us two. But if other people are there, then it's okay. I said most of the assault wasn't to Stephanie, it was to me. She just said Stephanie told her to do it, that's it, but that's not what people remember to or talk about. We're talking about what people know. What people know happened with Shook Bang, Veronica, me, Sasse, Samar. It was Veronica saying, Nick did this as a vegan. Nick is a liar. Nick made this up. Nick is Shook Bang. Da, da, da. It was most of it come to me. And I said, and it's because Stephanie at the time didn't say anything. What happened between them two is like a whole separate secret story. So people are going to be confused. Oh, well. A whole separate secret story. And then Zach says, I wonder if she's still going to do the video then with Veronica. Like, what would they even talk about? It's probably going to turn to another mukbang. And then I just said, she's trying to get an apology for the things Veronica did to her off camera that no one even knows about. So if that comes out, they will hate her even more. And then Zach says, when Stephanie realizes it, it will take months to film anything meaningful. I think she's trying to capitalize on it. That's what Zach said. I think Stephanie is trying to capitalize on it. Remember what I said my first impression of Stephanie was? He goes, yeah. And I said, let's throw Zach in there too. The more the merrier. That, and then Zach goes, that's why I told her that I'm not even involved, so it's up to you to sign off on it. I said, sigh, YouTube, LOL. Another text I'd like to show is a couple weeks later on September 10th, I said, and Stephanie is so slow at communication that I'm not gonna pursue it anymore. I don't wanna be an annoying Kim texting her over and over, LOL. When she doesn't respond to me, I can take it as a clear indication that she's not interested. She managed to look at her phone to get the appearance on B-Love's channel despite her busy move. So it's not like it isn't on, she isn't on her phone. And then Zach goes, yeah, I don't know what's going on with Stephanie. I wonder who her actual friends are, LOL. Now the whole Kim thing, when I first met Stephanie Sue over dinner, you know how she was going on and on and on and on about Veronica? She went on and on about you. That you pressured her into buying her a vacuum cleaner. That you used people at restaurants to pay for your, ask them to pay for their your seafood, for your seafood boils. That you were annoying her over and over and bombarding her with texts. She says that you were very shady and all, all I mean, Zach knows this, it's not, he'd be like, why did you mention it? And same with Be Love. I, the, what people see of Stephanie Sue on the internet is not the Stephanie Sue that people off camera know her as. That's also why people are probably uncomfortable with me because I tell it like it is. If I'm mean, if I'm an asshole, if I'm soaking up the drama because I like it, people already know that. There's no secrets there, I tell ya. But with Stephanie, she, her image, her persona on the internet is very like, I'm unproblematic. I don't like to take part. 
I don't talk ill will on anybody when that's exactly what she's doing off camera. Stephanie Sue was still so, so upset about Veronica Wang that she was willing to make a documentary about it. A documentary and stick Zach in there too for clicks. Capitalizing on something, an opportunistic. I'm telling you, my first impression of Stephanie was very self-serving. That was a couple of months ago. That was back in September, October, November, December. Three months later, she's still very, very upset about Veronica. I stayed there for a long time and we talked about Veronica. She brought her up. She is not happy. She is not comfortable with what took place. She is not Oh, it's no big deal. She's literally still thinking about it to this day, every day, talking about it. For her to go on camera and say that nothing really happened and she didn't want to talk about it and it was a little annoying but no big deal, that is completely, completely off base. Completely off base. She told me in my apartment, she told me in the car, she told me at her house that we were going to discuss Veronica on my channel. She didn't feel comfortable doing the documentary on her own because me and Zach both turned her down. So she was okay doing it with me because let's face it, she said nothing. I made video number one, video number two, video number three, number four, my reaction, my response. I was the damn reporter for that. Was it my business? Not really at first, but I felt bad for Shook Ben. It became my business when Veronica went after me over and over and over. And that's why when I grabbed the camera at the airport, which we'll get into, and I said, look guys, I feel like this was a setup. This is why I feel this way because she egged it on so rich off camera. And when the camera went on and saying, hey, Nick, drop the subject, or hey, move your hands, edit it out, she sat there and was like, oh, oh, I'm so uncomfortable, so that people could look, oh, Nick, dragging poor, innocent, little fluffy Stephanie down a road she would never go on. Just a few months ago, she was willing to air out all her grievances with me and her and Veronica in a documentary. The next thing. I am not a predator. I didn't sexually harass Stephanie Sue. I did not sexually or intimately intimidate Stephanie Sue. I didn't touch her, grope her, follow her, abuse her, or anything that she alluded to, insinuated by the way of comparison to her own past sexual trauma, her own past sexual PTSD, and the Me Too movement and linking that to her collaboration. I'm sorry, but there was no reason to bring up sexual assault into a discussion about ghosting me for a business meeting, lying about why you ghosted me for the business meeting, and then me being angry about it. Sexual assault, Me Too movement, PTSD, abuse, predatory tendencies, definitions about manipulation and da da that has nothing to do with anything that took place. Over six million people have viewed this video. I just checked. Six million people from around the world. I certainly don't have six million people out there who know who I am. There aren't six million people who know who Stephanie is. I mean, I don't even have two million subscribers, let alone six. That leaves for millions of people to discover and learn who I am in direct, from direct avenue of this video, which is fine. You can make videos about me all you want, but the title is why you're scared of me. Millions of people are coming to this video to learn why this girl who's crying and holding herself, which by the way, the thumbnail doesn't even appear in the video, why she's scared of me. And what do they see when they click it to learn why? They see a clip of me taken out of context of me saying to her, I hope you can trust me or something along those lines. Oh, we can trust each other now. There's another clip of me taken out of context, making comments about the Me Too movement out of context. And then there's another clip, a surveillance footage clip of an, at that time, unidentified man unidentified, over top of you, touching you as you scream and cry out. And then there's another clip of you saying to the camera, me too. Whoa, gee, was that by accident? Or was that to get an audience hooked to find out what I did to her 
regarding the Me Too movement. You scroll down to the description box and you read, here are some links to help you understand what he did to me. And one link is about emotional manipulation and the other link is to a story time video that I made about the Me Too movement. What he did to me. The Me, the me Too movement is not what I did to you, Stephanie Sue. The Me Too movement is not what I did to you. Emotional manipulation is not what I did to you. After Stephanie put out her video, totaling 6 million views, there are hundreds of videos coming out in response to it. And of those hundreds of videos, the views are amounting to tens of millions of views. And what are people saying about me right now? That I am a predator, that I am a manipulator, that I sexually abused Stephanie Sue, that I have predatory tendencies. Someone just put out a video today called Nikocado Grooms Stephanie Sue. Someone put out a video yesterday called Nikocado Avocado Sexually Assaults Stephanie Sue. I was on the Twitter trending page for two days, the United States trending page with tens of thousands of tweets about me and people saying I am a predator, a molester, a rapist, an abuser. I have documented all of it. I have proof and documentation that people have been reaching out to my sponsors and telling them not to work with me anymore because I have predatory sexual behavior. There are people who are commenting all over my videos with I harassed, I abused, I followed, I stalked, taking photos of someone's home so I could rape them. You rem people have reached out to my little brother. People have reached out to my family. I have people in my own lives saying, what the heck is going on? People are contacting my parents while they're at work. Even my own viewers thought that that person on top of her and the surveillance footage was me. Do you think everyone had time to watch the whole hour to find out you addressed who that was, identified him halfway through, 30 minutes later or something? Remember, millions of people viewed this who didn't know who I was. They didn't know what I looked like. They didn't even know my sexuality. And I am being bombarded, bombarded with accusations that are coming from your video. You insinuate it by the way you edited it. You alluded to it. You imp this is ramification by the way of implication. And this is going to follow me for life. For life. For life. Because you couldn't have a conversation. Because you didn't want to talk about some girl that you told me you wanted to. It's defaming who I am as a person. It's defaming our connection as YouTubers. And it's something that's going to follow me around I don't even know for how long. You know what I mean? Like, I can't make all six million people who watched her video come watch mine. I can't make all of my past or future sponsorships. I can't make them watch this video to say, hey, what you Google about me isn't true. I can't convince those brands in the future to come watch this video first before they decide if they want to work with me. This is going to hurt my business. This is going to hurt my reputation. It's already hurting. Toward the end of her video at the 46 minute mark, she starts talking about audacity and how I had the audacity to do these things and the audacity to quote, get my dick sucked. I'm sorry, that has nothing to do with you. Nothing, if you said that in a courtroom, your case would be dismissed in a second. How dare you? And then she's the definition of predatory, intending to expose others for personal gain or profit. I'm sorry. Well, couldn't that be said about you and trying to do that to Veronica and your whole documentary scheme? If you're going to talk shit, own it. Just own it. If you're going to talk shit, own it. But she, no, she'd rather do this whole thing with sexual assault and this emotional weapon to convince people that I'm a predator. That's what she'd rather do. She's gaslighting people now. And she's manipulating people by calling me a manipulator. It's projection. It's pure projection. I just need to make that clear. I am not a predator. I didn't groom anyone. I didn't touch anyone. I didn't assault anyone. I didn't emotionally manipulate anyone. Half of the video was about a crime that I didn't even commit. And now my family is getting messages saying that I am a sexual predator. This, and before you say, oh, you're just victimizing yourself. I'm a victim too. This is not my fault. 
This is no one's fault but hers. She deliberately edited her video in the beginning with the title, the description, to be this way. She deliberately spent half the video talking about a crime unrelated to me. Having said that, I want to put it on the record as well. I can't imagine what it's like to be touched or groped or penetrated or stalked or followed or uh, raped. I don't, I don't even know. I don't even know. But I am sorry that that happened to her a year ago, two years ago, five years ago. Whatever happened to her that she is referring to, I am sorry. I'm not trying to blame the victim. I'm not, you know, st questioning a victim's story. I'm not doing that. So let me make that distinction really clear right now. I am not questioning what happened to her. But I feel it is very unfair to hold that against me and use it against me. I'm not a mind reader. Nowhere in her texts, nowhere in her calls did she even pick up the phone. She said I was in and out of sleep and I have lots of sponsors that are overdue. If you hear a message like that after getting stood up for an entire day, an hour and a half before the sun goes down, does the first thing come to your mind say, oh, she was in and out of sleep because she's having PTSD about a sexual assault and a trauma? That it... I had no idea of knowing that. And she knows it. And she is so deliberate in this. And now... Again, I am sorry that she went through whatever she went through. I am not victim shaming her. I'm saying that because of how she put this on the internet, I am now going to have to live with people calling me a predator for God knows how long. And she knows that most people are not going to watch that whole video either. 45 minutes, 50 minutes, that's a very long time. Listen, we're YouTubers. We've talked about it before, talking about YouTube stuff. Analytics. We know that the longer the video, she and I make very long videos, the less likely people are going to watch it all because that's a lot of time to ask of people. Okay? So people are coming to the video. They're only going to watch the first minute or two. They're going to draw a conclusion by the way of the thumbnail, the title, the tags, the description. Gather the general consensus down in the comments to see the general reaction. Hundreds of thousands of people talking about it see all the tweets about me and jump on the board. It's mob mentality. It's literally cancel culture. That's how social media works and she knows that. She's a very smart woman. She knows exactly how this works. She's seen it done to so many other people. You know what I mean? That is a form of bullying. It's igniting the flame. Why would you deliberately frame a story to make it worse than it actually is? Why would you deliberately manipulate an audience into feeling extra emotional, extra sorry, extra scared for you if that story has nothing to do with me? She even said herself, I was more upset about this than anything else right after talking about being sexually assaulted. That makes people draw the conclusion, wow, what Nick did to her must have made her feel worse than when she was actually sexually assaulted. It's deliberate manipulation. And she knows, listen, again, six million people aren't following her day to day. Six million people aren't following my day to day. These people don't even know who I am. Literally the last time I went live streaming, I was getting lightheaded and scared thinking about having to put eye drops in my eyes. You're talking about someone who faints at the sight of blood. I can't even get my blood pressure taken. I'm a scaredy cat. I scream and cry if my finger gets poked from a king crab leg. I mean, I am a very timid, like, scaredy cat type of guy. Yet the way I'm portrayed in this video is calculating, sneaky, manipulative, coming to get you. And for the record, my comments about the Me Too movement that she chopped and chipped out of context was actually me saying the opposite of what she was trying to portray me as saying. I was saying in context that I didn't make a move because I'm not a mind reader and you have to be mindful because of the day and age and the culture we're in, which is why I didn't make a move and he didn't make a move. And I was upset because I said, wow, eight hours have gone by, which is the opposite of being a predator and having predatory tendencies where you convince them or pressure them to make a move or you actually make a move without them consenting to it. I literally did the opposite. And it was a video to show how often this happens in modern day dating, where you don't know who makes the first move, but now you have to be extra careful. That doesn't make me a predator. That makes me mindful. It, was it a bad joke? Sure, it was a bad joke. But she she was so deliberate to take it out of context because it was a good nugget. It was a good sound bite to persuade the audience to feel an extra, extra certain way about me. Because again, the original story of me being angry and wanting to know why she ghosted me and stood me up all day 
wasn't good enough to paint me as a terrible person. We have to pull in these things and chop them up and twist them to make it sound like, well, Nick was pressuring her and Nick was coming to get her and Nick's a predator and it leaves, it is by the way of implication. Another thing I wanna discuss is the collab on my channel, the three-way collab on Nikocado 3, where it's me, Zach, and Stephanie. And there's a point at the end of the video where we're wrapping things up and I'm saying goodbye. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you had a good time. Make sure you check out their channels and subscribe. Give them some support. Stephanie, is there anything else you'd like to say? Obviously, I'm not saying it like that because we're whispering, so I'm like, thank you. Is there anything else you'd like to add? And Stephanie's gesturing and putting her hand up as if she wants to say something. And I'm like, okay, what would you like to add? She uses that, she chops out the context, and she uses it to say I was pressuring her or making her feel uncomfortable like I want to bring up Veronica again. In an ASMR, what, we were just gonna whisper about her at the end of the video? Just ridiculous. She knows exactly what she was doing. She, do you think she didn't know how this would come across on screen? She was trying to emotionally sway her viewers into saying I had predatory tendencies. And of course it looks creepy because we're whispering. Is there anything else you'd like to add? You know, creepy, but we're whispering. Out of context, it looks even creepier. And she did this on person, on purpose to sell a story. There was no reason to add that out of context. She's saying that that was somehow, what did she say, evidence, or that backed up her feelings about me pressuring her to talk about Veronica. As if we were gonna bring her up at the end. The Veronica video happened five hours previously. That was the noodle video at my apartment. Five hours had gone by. We had to go to the grocery store. We had to shop for the ingredients. We drove all the way back to Zach's place. We had to make the food. That in itself took an hour or two. Set it up, I mean, Veronica was over and done with. We didn't even mention her. We didn't even mention her. And she's saying that that, she should have said this was the end of the video and I had to say goodbye. Wait, wait. Goodbye. She's playing the flute. So I said, do you want something else to say? And then she said, thank you for watching us eat this. And she laughed about it as she looked at the food because we had been making fun of the food. I think I have the Instagram story saved where we were mixing up the Cheetos and the mozzarella cheese and the, the nacho cheese. And we we're like, oh my God, this looks so crazy. It looks like a heart attack. It looks like a beating heart. Like what the heck are we ingesting? The things we do for YouTube, you know what I mean? Like it's pure shit, it's pure junk food. That's what she meant by thanks for watching us eat this. I obviously was giving her a chance to say goodbye and there's no way she didn't know this. She had to sit there and put it together and watch it. There was another thing actually on Zach's channel where we were doing our ASMR collab and at the end of it, there's like one piece of chicken left and we turn off the cameras and we go, well, how Zach does his collabs is very similar to mine. Remember say we know how to edit? We're YouTubers, we edit all the time. Zach literally every time, say he's eating a chicken leg, he'll eat the chicken leg and when he's done, he'll cut it. Take a break, wipe the sweat off, it's very hot in his box. Take some water, adjust the mics, think of what's gonna happen next, and then go for it. So we edit after every chicken leg or every bite. And that, we have water, we had to get up, refill our waters. There was editing going, being involved. And the last scene, we had discussed, it was Stephanie's idea that she would have the last leg and I would look at her like, ooh, what you doing? Cause I'm, you know, the fat pig that loves to eat. And it was literally, Following what me and Trisha had done, where we sat there with our noodles and we looked at each other and we glared. We're literally trying to be funny. We're trying to get a reaction out of the viewers. Well, people are taking that clip now and saying, ah, here's proof of Nick looking at Stephanie all creepily. Here's proof of Nick trying to groom her and pray his way onto her and manipulate her into saying something she'd never want to talk about. Poor, innocent Stephanie. And that was her idea. I didn't even, I didn't even, I didn't even realize until 
when I watched the video that I was like, she wasn't looking back at me either. I mean, it was a YouTube video. I was, there was no thought into it, looking at each other. She didn't even look at me. And I say to myself, why didn't she, why would she say to do this where we look at each other, who's going to go for the last chicken leg? And then when the cameras are rolling, she just looks at the screen as if she doesn't know what I'm doing over there. Like, what the hell, man? The next thing I want to talk about is our schedules. Now, in Stephanie's video, she says that she had to film all these videos. She had to do three videos. We filmed one and she had to keep pushing through. She was uncomfortable. She didn't know how to say no. She alluded and insinuated that she was there by the way of me and my requests. What she forgot to tell you was the truth. And the truth was we were there because she asked us to be. That was not in her schedule. Listen, when I go to Los Angeles, I spend a lot of money on flights, hotels, Airbnbs. I got an apartment, accommodations, foods, Ubers. And I have, I'm dealing with a lot of people, Chelsea Lynn, Trisha Paytas, Honey Eats, every, and everyone is lined up in a row, scheduled, okay? Like, B loves life. When she goes places, she schedules them, da 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 If one day's thrown off, it messes up the rest of the days for the other people. So one day, I gave to Stephanie and Zach. I went to Zach's place first. I stayed, we edited. I was there for like five or six hours. The second half of the day, I took an Uber to Stephanie's place, and I stayed at her house for... I don't know how many hours, but a very long time. We filmed, we talked, we hung out, da, da 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 Those days were for them. I had no videos for myself, okay? The next day was supposed to be a video with me and Stephanie for my channel and a video of me and Zach for my channel. Because remember, the first day, I worked on two other people's channels, their houses, their place, their schedules. The next day was my turn for me. Stephanie Sue sprung a breakfast up. We were supposed to meet she said, I had breakfast, I'm going out to eat with Zach, I'm running late, okay, that's fine. Then she ran even later, there was a long line, okay, that's fine. You know what, if you're out with Zach eating when we're supposed to be filming, you know, I, I didn't make a fuss of it to her, I didn't say it. I said, let them eat, enjoy themselves, I'm just going to film something quickly because I didn't film a video yesterday for my channel. Get it up and going, so by the time you're digested and you're hungry again, you can come over, we'll do our video, and then I'll go to Zach's and do his video. Stephanie Sue invites herself into my collab with Zach. She invites herself into it. That was not for her, it wasn't for her to be there. And she did it over FaceTime while I was standing in Jollibee. And I sent a message to Carly Steele. I'll show you the date, December 15th, um, 3.14, here we go. Hey, so you know how I did my collab with Zach yesterday? Well, today was supposed to be our collab for my video, for my channel. Well, Stephanie Sue just like invited herself into it. So this is exactly what I was afraid would happen. She's very like, um, I don't want to say self-centered, but just very like um, self-serving. Like if she can stick her way into it any way she can, she does. And so she like FaceTime me with them both together in the car on their way to pick up food for a collab. When they were supposed to come over, to, he was supposed to come over and collab with me. I hate when people do this shit. I didn't want a three-way. I wanted one with Zach, just like I had one with him on his channel. It's just not fair. Well, two times ago when I was in LA, I remember she messaged me saying, hey, I have this great idea. Because another mukbanger named Kimmy was in town. And she's like, how about let's do a four-way collab with me, you, Kimmy, and Honey, and we'll put it on my channel. And, I'm, and Honey doesn't like Stephanie Sue either. Well, she's like, she, all she cares about is herself. And Honey has never talked to her. She's never gotten to know her. She literally just said, hey, can you be on my channel? And like, if it was all four of us, that would get hella views. And she wanted her for her channel. Never talked to us before. Never asked how we're doing. Never want to like meet. She just said like come over and film. She just wanted to stick us on her channel. She doesn't even like us. She just wanted to use us. We felt very used. And so I turned it down. So now this is happening all over again. Like all over again. Totally ranting right now, but I'm waiting for my Uber, so I have nothing else to do. Like she did this. She's tried this three times. This is her third time doing it, and she succeeded this time. Ugh. Oh my god. I'm telling you, L LA would make me so depressed. And, like everything is about them, and it's just. It's just rude. It's just rude. It was, you don't invite yourself to someone else's collab. That's so fucking rude. And like, the thing is too is you called it. Like you fucking knew. You knew. It seems like, yeah, like she's just really fucking selfish. And what's shitty is like they put you in an uncomfortable position because they FaceTimed you with like both of you together, and that puts you in an uncomfortable situation because you can't say no. You look bad. It's kind of like I think she knew what she was doing. She seems very manipulative. Like manipulating her way into people's heads and she also manipulates viewers but i think that's like me being like 
like me knowing that you and Trisha are collabing and being like, hey, can I hop in your collab? Like, even when someone asked me that on Instagram, I was like, uh, I don't know, like, maybe. I would never invite myself to, like, someone else's collab. I think it's so rude. I don't even like asking people to collab unless, like, they're on my level or, like, they've been my friends for a long time because it's just uncomfortable. Like, this is people's money business. This is some serious shit. Like, yeah, it's friendship, too, but, like, that shit is business. Like, what you're doing with Stephanie Sue is straight up business. It's just rude like i don't know how these people were raised yeah i hate la too 100 percent. so that's the truth i didn't pressure her to be there i didn't pressure her into filming really late at night where she was uncomfortable and she's never been out that late and that is just not the truth and people no noticed that something was up in my jollybee video take a look i just ah uh, i just oh gosh it's it's very hard to sometimes be myself and sometimes uh, <laughs> I'm one of those people that like, I am letting you know I'm actually really upset right now. I am so mad. I don't want to cry. Oh. I'm so sorry. I literally, I thought I could get through it. Well, this video is now ruined. Great. I couldn't even contain, I couldn't even act my way through it. Like, oh, I'm so happy. I was like, you guys, I'm kind of sad about something. I just don't understand people. I don't remember what I said, but I remember not making it obvious it was about anyone. I think I even mentioned Orland so people could like, oh, it's probably just making none. Something back home happens and I'm so like, kind of like bothered and now it's affecting my presence. I actually didn't want to talk about any of this. I didn't want to, but this is what started me being so upset. So when she blew me off the next day for our collabs, you know, I, this is where a lot of my frustration was coming from. This is what started it. She started it. I didn't just wake up saying like, F this girl. You know what I mean? So this is, she's very sneaky. How she is off camera, when we did those three-way collabs, she complained, she bitched, she moaned, she rolled her eyes. And she even kind of alluded to this saying like, I keep, keep pushing forward. It's like... You invited yourself there. You could have said, actually, I changed my mind. It was just ridiculous. And she did it for her own benefit. So she could be on my channel. I get double her views that she could be on Zach's channel in our collab because she knows when me and, clap, me and Zach last collaborate, it got a million something views. She wanted to be part of that so that people could go to her page too. It's just rude. And I had that gut instinct already. She had done this before. I, I feel so bad for Honey because people think like she was just picking on Stephanie out of the blue. Stephanie has given her the middle finger for a very long time. She's taken some sponsorships from her. She's never ever gotten to know her. She only contacts her when she wants something out of her. And that's for Honey to talk about. If she wants to go into depth, there's a lot that goes on. I just don't, please don't think that Honey, I convinced Honey Stephanie was a di there's a lot of people who already have this opinion about Stephanie Sue. How she is on camera is not the real Stephanie Sue. Zach told me that Stephanie told him that she was willing to collab with me now, not the first time, not the second time, not the third time, maybe for a drama five-part docuseries on my channel. Um, but now she's willing to do it because the views kept going down, 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 down. You can look at her social blade and her views have been going down for like almost half a year, just steadily declining. Now it's worth it and now she's willing to do it because it's Nikocado Avocado and she's gonna get clicks. Because I am dramatic, because I am forthright and I say too much and I, I like to spill the beans. She knows that it would it would have gotten attention. And Zach told me that that's the reason she only decided to do it. People in Los Angeles can be really flaky. Um, people don't stand by their word. I feel like this is what I have. This is what I have. I have viewers, and to me that's comfort. Um, I don't know, I don't even know what to say. I just feel like there's people here listening, giving me comfort. It's so weird, my life is so fucked up. I feel like being a YouTuber can be very, very, like just fucks with your head. Having numbers and followers attached to your name makes people look at you different, treat you different. And I and I already sensed it. I, but YouTube is a business. And before you say, oh, you guys are so fake forcing yourselves to eat together, I'm sorry, not really. Here's the thing. 
When you go to the office and your boss assigns you on a project with someone and you don't really like Steve, but you and Steve have to do this project together, you're going to do it because that's your job. That's your job. You don't have to be best friends and cuddly with people to eat together, to film together. It is a business. We share subscribers. It brings something new to the channel. It's not that big of a deal. You're able to do things for business reasons and friendship reasons. Most of my collaborations have been people that I repeat again and again, painting me to be out this, this monstrous manipulative person. Meanwhile, I'm over here repeating my collabs, having good track record with people that I associate myself with over and over. Prissy P, Hungry Fat Chick, B Loves Life, Carly Steele, Eric the Electric, two, Eric the Electric two times, even Trisha Paytas. I mean, and it's not a numbers game, but she's collabed with who? Veronica Wang and B Loves Life. That's it. That's it of the Muckmongers. That's it. So you are able to do things for business reasons. And I knew it, but you don't behave like that. I mean, she, you don't do that. Around the 33 minute mark, she's talking about audio clips and how I was illegally recording her. Well, she wasn't sure, but she had to make a point. Just a little side note, it is illegal if you release them. I didn't record her, ever. I have never recorded anyone, ever, without their consent. I took a photo with her consent, but that's it. I didn't record her saying, doing anything, ever. Anybody, anybody. My audio clips were referring to my messages with Carly Steele and Orlin, talking about how you stood me up and ghosted me and how you butted your way into other people's collabs. If her mind went straight to, oh my God, it must have been about me, could it be that she said a lot of different stuff about a lot of different people that if were to go public, she'd be in trouble for her? What's that saying? Um, those who uh, fear the least have the least to hide, something like that. Now let's talk about her merch. I think it's great if you want to raise money for awareness and s for a good cause. It's just very pecul peculiar to me that all of a sudden the exact phrase, in and out of sleep, that she said brought her to such emotional distress as now she's giggling and laughing about it because it's making money for her. And she's saying that 100% is going to charity. Well, you know what she did? She knows that she's getting tens of thousands of people going to her merchandise page, that this influx of traffic, that she put a sale on every single one of her items. Every single one to, I don't know, persuade people to buy something else to support her, to, oh, well, it's on sale, might not be on sale again. She's never had a sale there before, as far as I know. But why now? She knows everyone's going to her page to support this horrific phrase. Why is that funny? Why is that funny and to giggle about all of a sudden? Something that's so traumatizing before, 48 hours, 72 hours later, you were laughing at. That's what she blamed me for. Remember that the in and out of sleep directly mocked her PTSD from her sexual assault? That phrase was so difficult to see and hear and imagine other people saying? Well, now she's suddenly okay with it because it's making her money. Why not just ask people to donate directly? I know it's also strange too. She wore her merchandise shirt in her accusation video. Who the heck promotes their t-shirts in a video like that? And she linked it. That's what I'm saying. Zach is right. She is capitalizing on any little thing she can do. Imagine, just imagine, if I wore my t-shirts, if I promoted my damn t-shirts in my Trisha Paytas video, would people have taken me seriously? Would, that would be the first thing people talk about. You know, that would be the, it, talk about disingenuous and manipulation. You want to talk about manipulation? You're doing, what's that called? Subliminal messages, sub, subliminal marketing. So people see it, they think about it, they remember it. Oh, she wore that same shirt. Well, now it's on sale. I'm going to support her bullying thing, but let me buy that too. In my view, it just cheapens the validity of what she was trying to say. I just want to make a few comments about her mukbang. Okay, so her first video back after being absent for a week, give or take, she came out with her accusation against me. She was, she never said anything. She was silent. Her first video back was in and out Burger. I find it peculiar. I find it odd, very strange, very unusual behavior. Coming from someone who sat on camera and said that what I did to her was quote unquote, the worst experience she's ever had. Remember, she said she went to the bathroom and had the worst breakdown of her life and she couldn't even explain to her fiance. 
That was worse than the actual person who sexually abused her. All right, let's not forget that connotation, that connection, that insinuation that leaves the viewer to believe that this was so, so bad that what I did was actually worse than her sexual abuser by the way she phrased it. So that is the context. That phrase, in and out, 70 hours later, she had a merch line, a company, a, a, an artist, she produced it, and then she came back with an in and out mukbang. Now, Something Stephanie did tell me when I first met her, when we were eating dinner, we were talking about YouTube. She said that, because I always use the restaurant logos in my videos, I always use it, okay? She said she rarely uses, you know, Applebee's, McDonald's, KFC, Popeye's, or, you know, all these things. She rarely uses their logos, Pizza Hut, Little Caesars, because it's subliminal marketing, and that comes at a high price. And she says, unless a company is paying her for that service, She's not gonna hand it to them because we, we're very visual creatures. She's very smart. I don't know if she's taking courses in marketing, but she knows exactly what she's doing. We're very visual people. We see it, we remember it, the colors, the red, and we go out and purchase. She doesn't use logos. Very, I mean, I'm sure she probably has a few out there, but it's very rare. Well, this video back, after the text that I made in and out of sleep that she said was so terrible, she has a merch line, and then her next video back was the in and out with the logo. And on top of it, the video she posted before the accusation was also in and out without a logo. And let me just tell you something, as a mukbanger, to keep people watching, to keep people engaged and interested, you don't want to repeat the same foods, or they're likely to be like, oh, I just saw this last week, I want to see something new. This was mukbang, accusation, mukbang, in and out, in and out. So it was just deliberate, and I just, again, it was very unsettling for me personally just to see the sublip, the, and she's saying she's taking her power back and using something so traumatized, traumatizing and using it as a way to feel empowered. I do not doubt that anything happened to her, clearly. Clearly, I don't doubt that she was molested or raped or whatever happened. I don't doubt her sexual assault, the battery, whatever. What I doubt is me and our collaboration produced even worse feelings that would result in this. And then marketing, profiting, subliminal messages. It just, again, makes me wonder. Out of all of the food choices, why in and out? And then if you look at the tags, look at the tags under her accusation video. It says, hi, Nick, I know you're seeing this. Who taunts with their uh, abuser who taunts with a predator if she's that scared of me that is the strangest thing no one's ever done that for to me before I've been on YouTube since 2015 I've had problems with various different people the vegans have come after me I've had problems with you know I've never seen someone taunt me in their tags let me tell you someone like Stephanie Sue is very very smart at keywords what's searchable Again, the marketing, the advertisement, subliminal messages. She knows that that phrase isn't a CEO, a SEO word. Sorry, I don't even know. An SEO word. She knows. She knows. That was for me to see. Because people can't see that unless they're a YouTuber or they have special downloaded software to get those tags. That was subliminal messaging to me saying, I know you're seeing this. Why, if she's that scared, that upset, that traumatized, why would she toy with me? Wave the bone in my face. In Stephanie's video, she edited a part from my video where I was talking about the in and out of sleep at the club. We were dancing and laughing about what just had happened. She took a part where I was stuttering on my words and made fun of it. It wasn't that big of a deal. I'm not going to lose sleep over it. Honestly, if this problem wasn't happening, I wouldn't even think twice over it. People make fun of me all, all the time on YouTube for stuttering. I usually blame it on like, oh, my brain's fried from veganism or, oh, I have hypoglycemia. I stutter. I have a stuttering problem. I've had one for years, ever since I started YouTube. You know, people make fun of me for my face, my double chin, being dramatic. I don't care. I, I don't care about being made fun of. Or I'm only bringing this up because it's very peculiar. She's trying to have this campaign against bullying and she would never want to bully someone. And, you know, I, I'm trying to do this benevolent thing where I read this, turn this terrible, terrible phrase into something happy and good. Not only did she not say, hey, viewers don't bully either. You know, she didn't say that, but she also essentially poked fun at me too. It just, it does, it just, it was like, juh, 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 making fun of my speech. It's like, it's not gonna make, I, it's whatever. People can make fun of the way I talk. But 
don't put yourself on a high horse. Like you're doing the same thing too. In and out of sleep is really, is not, is not a mean thing to say. And jajula bajula bajula or whatever she had said is not gonna is not the meanest thing in the world either. It's really childish. Both of it's childish. But she's thinking that I was such a bully, bully, bully. But I didn't put it on YouTube. It was on my Instagram, and no one knew what that was about except for like three or four people. And then she put that on her video, which got viewed six million times. Of course, people are gonna see that as license to go to my channel and add fuel to the fire. And this is coming from someone who's claiming to like, not wanna take part in bullying and really wanna like, be all nice and fluffy and perfect and clean. It's like, why would you even edit that in there? That, that has nothing to do with anything. <laughs> like, that's the funny part. That clip of me stuttering on my speech, why would you even include that? Just go to the part where I talked about what I talked about. Like, just be real, man. Just be real. I just... Now let's talk about her being so uncomfortable. So we've talked about she lied about the photo. She lied about the collabs. She lied about me being threatening in her house. Now let's talk about the collaboration, how she said she was so uncomfortable. And she said she got so distressed that she started touching me and wiping me. It's like... To me, that's pretty damn playful. I mean, you're so scared of me that your first instinct is to touch me. I mean, I'm not claiming there's no consent there, but how does it work? How does that work? You know what I mean? The next thing I'd like to point out is that nowhere in her videos, not the first video that got six million views and not the follow-up video that, I don't know what it's at now, half a million, one million, something like that. Neither one of her videos did she sit there and say, hey guys, make sure you don't bully either. She didn't have the occurrence to ask her viewers, hey, don't bully either. I'm saying that this person bullied me. I'm accusing them of X, Y, and Z. But by the way, I'm taking a stance against bullying. So don't go bully the bully. You know, don't perpetuate a cycle. I'm trying to do this benevolent thing where I have merchandise and I'm giving this money to this bullying organization. But there was an occurrence to say, and by the way, stop bullying them too. Honey Eats has gotten so many death threats. Remember when Veronica Wang said that? She didn't prove it. Uh, maybe she did. I don't know. Tony Eats has. She showed the screenshot. She shows what people were saying. Just meeting her in the grave with her dead father and her brother who has some kind of disablement. You know, he deserves to die. Like, just really heinous thing over something very, very insignificant. You think she doesn't know that? You think she isn't a well aware? She says, I've loved everything I've seen on Twitter. Well, what are you looking at on Twitter? Half of it's about me being a predator. It did occur to you to say, by the way, let me make sure there's a distinction here to all these viewers who don't know who Nick is and only watch the first two minutes. I have proof. My receipts tell me that she liked my Instagram photo saying I was exposing someone and she knows it was about herself because Zach told her. And by the way, that's the first and only Instagram post of mine that Stephanie Sue has ever liked, ever. She's never publicly commented to support me in my Instagram. She's never made nothing. And that's fine. Again, this is my business. This is whether we're eating, putting on makeup, doesn't matter. Don't try to diminish it. Oh, you're just eating. It's not that big of a deal. It's our craft. And with regard to our craft, people are coming after it. Yanni Eats has been posting all week long, all week long, dozens and dozens of types of messages she's getting from Stephanie's fans or people who have just been, you know, exposed to this situation with the most heinous things I have ever seen. I mean, I get, well, I try not to read it. I'm sure I get lots. I know I get lots. I don't open it. I haven't been opening my DMs or even looking at it, but Yanni is really, really not taking this well. And guess who's watching? Every single story who has been watching it for days and days. Here are the receipts. Only 2,000, 3,000 people saw this story. He only just posted it a couple of hours ago. And there's no occurrence to Stephanie, who's doing this, carrying the torch, trying to lead the way in anti-bullying and hate speech. Go on camera, even. The place where this all started and say, do not bully people. That might be a good start. I mean, she uploaded a video called Life Update, and she said, oh, well, it's kind of awkward, but I can accept her, pol her apology. Why didn't she t throw in there? And I've also seen how people have reacted and it's broken my heart. Or I've seen how people have twisted this into being this big old extra thing and it's also broken my heart. And by the way, please don't send her hate speech. Didn't say anything. Didn't say anything at all.
in and out of subscribers, in and out of relevancy, in and out of money, in and out, I mean, her viewers or people, again, who have been exposed to the situation, who don't know either any of us, are saying that stuff to us. So in and out of sleep, in and out is such a terrible atrocity to her. But if it's being used towards others, she's sitting there watching it and she's not saying a peep. Again, I'm not holding it against her. She should have said this shit. It just, uh, I find it very odd behavior that there would be no general occurrence. I'm thinking of people who truly are trying to open their hearts and really fight for all ends of the stick and it doesn't even occur to her to say, hey, leave honey alone. Hey, stop bullying people. Hey, don't use my video as ammunition against someone else doesn't say anything and she's been watching my stories too the minute I post it within the minutes within five minutes and I have 70,000 people watching my stories right now why are you keeping tabs on what I do next why are you knowingly wanting to be reminded of what I say and think day after day after day as I make my Instagram stories listen I've had beef with people in the past and people that I'm just like oh makes me sick to my stomach I want nothing to do with them I unfollow them. I even block them in some cases. I don't say, hey, let me remind myself today about someone who made me so upset to see what they're doing now. When you're really that upset, where it's so much easier to grab a camera, talk about things, edit in your cries. Listen, the cries were edited in. She cut mid cry out, cut mid cry out. Toward the end of the video, cut mid cry out. It was so much easier to do these things and you're that scared and that determined to make people feel a certain way about me. You're that, that desperate to make sure people say, wow, look what Nick did to her. And you're still willing to watch my stories to see what I do next so you have more material. Who taunts somebody that they're so afraid of? Who? I would generally like to know. Who taunts somebody like that? And then you're going to like posts about yourself being exposed by me? Why? Why would you like that, Stephanie? There's something I do, again, the whole I'm so uncomfortable, I don't know how to get out of it. You got any, any of my viewers know, maybe not the millions of people who just learned who I was and who thinks I'm a predator now, but my regular audience, they know that I go like this. It's something I learned from Be Love's Life. And she said, Nick, you go like this, I'll take it out. And that's what I tell everybody. I told her the minute she was in my kitchen, I said, and if there's anything you want to take out, just go like this, or just be like, oh my God, you know, just go like this. I always do it. If you want to change the subject or you want to go like this, I, we even did it in Zach's video. We'll be like, Ch -ch 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 -ch. because we know we're YouTubers, we're editing. This isn't a live interview on 60 minutes. This is an edited video, an edited video. And she knows how to edit, clearly. So why didn't she just say, oh, here comes the Veronica topic, I changed my mind. Okay, all that stuff I told, oh, no, 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 no. Let's just, let's just talk about something else. No, she was traumatized that I would do something to her. Based on what? What did I ever do in my speech, in my action, in my gesture, in person, at that time during our collab, that would have given her the feeling of, if I say no, he might do something, like what? hurt you, touch you, hit you, attack you? Like what? What? Everybody knows this. Ask Chelsea Lynn, ask Carly. Carly literally said, Nick, take this part out. I took it out. Even Trisha Paytas, she called me and we talked about something we had talked about and she's like, take that part out. I took it out. Some of my collabs, I give them a copy of the video to review before I even post it. Jesse Smiles asked for it. People asked it. This is YouTube. She knows how it works. Oh my God. And she didn't even ask me at the end of the video, oh, could you take that part out actually? But you know, I'm really uncomfortable. She didn't even say anything. She didn't even say anything. Was she hoping that I would post it so that people could say, ah, look at Nick dragging poor sweet Stephanie down a road she would never go down. Just, oh my gosh, as you can see, I'm getting so heated. That's why when I stepped off the plane, first of all, let's talk about the plane ride. Let's talk about that. Nobody knew the time of my flight except for two people. Two people knew the time of my flight. Zach Choi and Stephanie Sue. That's it. Those were the two people who knew the time of my flight. Two people. Stephanie posted her video around the time of me boarding the plane. Stephanie Sue has never posted ever 
a mukbang or a video on her channel that early ever and i did see a lot of people commenting about wow this is uh, strangely early i believe in coincidences i think there are things that happen in life where people are like oh gee what are the chances of that but given all of this she lied about the photo she lied about the video she lied about this she lied about the in and out she lied about me knowing she was sexually assaulted that's why she couldn't talk to me she lied she put my names in the put my name in the tag to taunt me hi i know you see this she's liking my fo photos photos about uh, exposing her she's watching my stories like a hawk to see what my next move is she's m monetizing this whole experience to make more money putting all of her merch on sale she's wearing her merchandise in her video she's lying about the whole thing about veronica when given the history that i have from my perspective i'm s that's why i don't think it was a coincidence it's hard to believe that this was an accident what they did not know was that I told them the wrong time. It was actually an hour after I thought. See, when I schedule my flights, I tell myself in my head a time to be extra early just in case. So I was literally stepping onto the airplane and I was texting Zach. And the video had just been dropped. A bunch of people were saying it to me and I was literally walking onto the airplane. I can't defend myself up in the air. And I do need to say, when I made the in and out of sleep joke, that was my way of feeling better. From my perspective, after all the shenanigans we had gone through the day beforehand where she like complained and moved the schedules around and I still did it, it's business. And we were supposed to get together that morning, you know, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, almost 4 p.m. Eight hours later, did she say, sorry, I've been in and out of sleep. That was a lie because Zach called me and said that she was awake at 11 a.m. And I said, literally, I'm a real person. What I said to her is what I would tell you. I said, why don't you just tell me when you were out of sleep, I can't make it. I don't understand. You know what I mean? The in and out of sleep remark that I said when I told, re retold the story to my friends Tian, Honey, and one of her friends who wants to be unnamed, he's not a YouTuber. I told them what I had known up at that point in time. I did not know that she was having PTSD. I did not know that she was sexually traumatized and shaking because of it. I did not know that she was seeing me as a predator like no communication about that whatsoever and now she's letting people believe an egg in the maw to think that i was making fun of her i'm victim shaming by saying in and out of sleep how dare you i have i am so sorry that whatever happened to you happened to you i again i don't know but that's not my fault and you knew how you were arranging the video to make it seem like I knew that I was thinking of it in that moment when you stood me up for six, seven hours. I, I texted Be Love's Life and I said, has this ever happened to, before, to you before? And she was like, absolutely not. No way. You know, people are, this is profession. This is people's time. It doesn't matter if I'm eating, putting on makeup, doing reaction videos or silly little skits. This is my money, this is my business. People are flying in. Chelsea Lynn drove how many hours to come see me? People, this is a business. You don't just show up and if you're late, you say, sorry, I can't make it or let's re She waited till the sun went down, an hour before the sun went down, 3.30, 4 p.m. to say, I was in and out of sleep and I have a lot of sponsors. That's a lie because I know what Zach told me. It's also a lie because where are those sponsored posts? All these time sensitive posts. How many videos has she made on her mukbang channel? Two. Two, one, one, one video. It was this video. She hasn't posted for like 10 days. I already knew she was lying and that's why I was heated. And then I went on my Instagram and I said, I'm exposing someone. She saw it, she liked it. And then she proceeded to tell me this damn PR statement. I have no ill will against Veronica. I was so uncomfortable. I felt, you know, I'd feel kind of pressured. I'm like, then let's just not talk about it. That's not what you told me in person. You had this whole idea to do a documentary earlier, so to stop acting like she knew, she knew. She was creating a paper trail. In my view, that's what she was doing. And by the way, that's not slanderous or defamation. That's my opinion, and I'm letting you know that's my opinion. I went to a bar with Honey Eats. We went to a Korean bar, and we were drinking a lot. We had like seven, eight drinks. I think Honey has a photo on our Instagram. <laughs> we were having a great time. We were. It felt so good to laugh things off and drink away our issues and our fears and our problems and just have fun. I got to meet Tian. He's another mukbanger. He does YouTube. Uh, one of Honey's friends. Really, really cool guy. We just had, it was the four of us. And at that moment, I told them about Stephanie Sue. You already know, 
Stephanie and Honey had their previous issues together, their previous issue, dislike of each other. Actually, when I was at Stephanie's house, she asked me, why does Honey hate me? Putting me on the spot, and I told her. I'm like, because you blow her off. You don't communicate. You don't show any type of effort that you want to get to know her or meet her. You just want to use her. And that's what I told Stephanie at her house. What I say on camera, I say off camera. If I think someone's a bitch, I say someone's a bitch. Stephanie has this del delicate dandelion flower image on the internet where she's unproblematic, and that's just not the case. So I told Honey, because Honey already disliked her. And you d don't say I'm the only person in the world who's gonna get comfort by meeting up with someone to complain about someone we both don't like or both have had issues with over a drink or a couple drinks. Like, it wasn't malicious. I wasn't saying, let's get the whole internet after her. Let's tag her name, F Stephanie Sue, nothing. I told them all what happened. I told them that I got stood up. I told them about her inviting herself to the collabs. I told, I told them everything I told you. One of my takeaway moments was when I showed them her responses. Oh, I was in and out of sleep. We thought that was a backhanded response and we laughed it off. We made a joke, in and out of sleep. Ooh, I'm in and out of sleep. Oh, I'm in and out of sleep. I did not tell them that it was about sexual assault. I didn't tell them that said Stephanie Sue was assaulted. I didn't tell them that she was raped or touched or groped or harassed or stalked or whatever happened to her. I don't even know. I don't even know. I don't even know. And by the basis of her text messages, I wouldn't have even known that that's why she couldn't meet up with me. What she, what you can see are text messages. There's no indication where someone says I'm in and out of sleep. And your first occurrence is, oh, they must be having traumatic PTSD from being raped. That's not a normal occurrence. That is not a normal, oh, that's what it's about. To me, it's like, oh, you're being lazy or you're oversleeping or it's just an excuse. You know, like what you do in school, you're late for school. Oh, I overslept. You know, you just didn't feel like going to school. She didn't feel like collabing with me. I was pissed. So we laughed it off. I made an Instagram post, in and out of sleep with the logo in and out. And I tagged the people who knew. And I also tagged people who were my friends who did not know. The people who did not know, B Loves Life, Chelsea Lynn, Patricia Paytas, and Eric the Electric. The other people, Carly Steele, Orlin Holm, Honey, Tian, and I think I tagged Honey's friend. I can't remember. Maybe, oh, I don't think I did because he didn't want to be on the internet. Those people knew. I owe a big apology publicly to the people I tagged who had no idea what that was about. I honestly did it because I wanted to feel better. I did it because I was saying, you know, I know what you're doing, but I'm gonna laugh it off or I'm gonna say, look, I have people on my side. I'm not gonna let this ruin my day. It was childish, it was stupid, it was dumb. It was, it was a taunting tactic. It was really taunting. And I'm sorry for bringing in those four people into it because they're not the type of people who would do that. Chelsea Lynn, I adore her. I love her. I love Eric the Electric. I love Be Loves Life. I love Trisha Paytas. I, I love all of them. We, we still have good relationships. More so, I hope that the viewers can forgive me because now they're getting attacked for saying, you're making fun of a rape victim. You're making fun of a sexual assault victim. You're belittling and making fun of someone's trauma. How dare you, Be Loves Life? Or how dare you, Chelsea Lynn? Chelsea Lynn got all these messages you're mocking and victimizing and shaming a woman. And she's like, what the f And that's my fault because I tagged them in something like that. I didn't know it was gonna be portrayed that way either. I have to put that on the record, but that's how it was twisted. And that's why it looked really bad. And I shouldn't have done to begin with. I really shouldn't. It was stupid. It was, I could have just done that privately with me, Honey and Tian and Honey's friend, just sitting there drinking and saying in and out of sleep. You know, I really should not, I shouldn't have brought to that level. So I am sorry for that because those are very good people. Um, yeah. I'm affected by ghosting. One of the reasons as to why I was so affected by when Trisha ghosted me, well, she actually asked this question to me on her podcast and she said like, oh, um, the ghosting thing really affects you, but some people, and you mentioned it's because you're very professional, you come from a business 
aspect or whatever, which is true. I was a freelance violinist. You show up, you do your job, you're running late, you let them know. This like ghosting, not showing up, it never was part of my experience as an adult, young adult leaving high school, you know, working in the real world and stuff. I never really experienced it ever. And if there was people running late or not showing up, they let me know ahead of time. So I wasn't sitting there. And that's also, can I just say why this made me extra upset? Because I was hangry. Remember, our meeting, our relationship, our scheduled appointment was on the basis of us being hungry for. This wasn't just a chit chat, whatever. We had to be very hungry so we could eat a lot of food. So if I'm waiting an hour, two hours, three hours, I'm saying, gosh, do I eat now? But well, then I'm going to get full. Then we have to wait extra. What if she comes five minutes after I start eating? Well, then, you know, it's it, it, mukbang is hard to organize. That's why when be love, she schedules everyone in a row because you can't take a chance of someone not coming and they might be late, but you don't know, and then you don't eat. And this wasn't six hours without eating. This was after sleeping for nine hours. And I saw people on Twitter saying, oh gosh, poor baby, he has to not eat for five hours. It was, it was five hours of waiting, but I hadn't eaten since the night before when we filmed her collab, which was like, I don't know, 10 p.m. So that's 12 hours plus 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 hours without food. You know what I mean? Like, do I eat? Do I snack? What do I do? I'm in an Airbnb. There's no food here. I have to go out, take an Uber to a grocery store, Postmates something, wait for it to get here another half hour. Well, what happens if it comes here and then she says, oh, I'm on my way. So I was just waiting. And that's why I was extra hangry too, on top of what I'm trying to get at right now as to why I was very emotionally upset. Yes, in my experience, people have never ghosted me except for the Trisha thing. And she did ask me on her podcast. I don't think she's, put, maybe she, she'll post it by the time I come out with this video. And she asked me about adoption. And she asked me, cause she has considered adoption cause she can't have kids. And she said, has that ever played a role on your relationships? And I sat there and I thought, I'm like, oh no, not really. Well, something I've, I've never talked about on camera that might be a good time to talk about now is that when I was adopted, I developed attachment disorder. Um, it's really uncomf uncomfortable for me to talk about. Um, I don't know why I'm embarrassed by it, but I am. Um, I've been in therapy since I was five years old. Seven years old, I was put on Zoloft. I've been Adderall, Ritalin, Concerta, this and that, diagnosed with depression, and they tried search test me for bipolar disorder and personality disorder and ADD, ADHD, OCD, um, trying to figure out why I have my little quirks and the way I am the way I am. I hate being ignored. And that is, I know, directly related to my attachment disorder. So when you're born, you bond with your mother and you get your brother, your mother's breast milk. And that's how you're nurtured through that chemical bond, that emotional bond, that spiritual bond. That's how most babies are born. And I was left in a hospital for over a year and I was passed from caretaker to caretaker to caretaker to nurse to doctor. And I never got an emotional bond. It's very common with kids who are adopted, unless they're adopted, right when they're born or a couple weeks at most maybe a month or two the, the 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 chances go up the older they get and uh, attachments are formed in the brain this is what my therapist told me i remember back when i was 10 years old my mom trying to explain to me what i have um they said that it happens those first couple weeks and first couple months are the most critical for determining real bonds and attachments. I don't like to use my mental struggles as a crutch or an excuse for why the way I am the way I am. That's why to this day, no one knows it until now. The symptoms are not fun. I mean, like you can't have certain bonds. It's harder for you to trust or a feeling of rejection, a feeling of abandonment. That is literally what I felt as a kid, psychologically, subconsciously, as I was growing and developing from this big or this big, you know, this big, that is what I experienced. And I hate the feeling of rejection. I hate the feeling of being ignored. I will check in very often to follow up if I'm being ignored. 
Um, and I get really bad anxiety over being ignored. Um, and it stems from my touch attachment disorder. I'm not saying this for a pity party. Trust me. Probably will never mention it again. But I feel like I do need to explain myself as to why she said, no, can't make a goodbye. I mean, obviously I was pissed. Everyone gets mad, like, in and out of sleep. Okay, well, when you're out of sleep, let me know what's up. Like, that in itself, I feel 100% justified in my response. Like, when she says I have sponsors, I'm like, you just realized now. I'm sorry, I feel 100% justified in that reaction. I think most people would have reacted that way if they were left hanging for seven hours on a on a appointment that depended you to be hungry for like it just i feel like most people would have been really pissed and that was a very backhanded response and it was untruthful because i know she was awake zach had told me so that i am not sorry for what i am sorry for is the following i'm sorry for the way i reacted when she said oh no i must have been a little uncomfortable da, 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 or i didn't want to talk about veronica but again i in my head said oh look She's creating a paper trail because I said right away, out of anger, I'm an emotional person. I went to Instagram and said, I'm going to expose someone. People are so self-serving. That's what I meant by that. People are so inconsiderate. That's what I meant by that. Um, in my head, I was just like, I'm not believe. That's why I said, don't play games. I'm like, I'm not falling for any of this. Well, I did. I played right into her hands. But also, you, there's an element there of like, why can't you just walk away? They said they were uncomfortable. They might be lying, they might not be lying. It's not for you to know or, I mean, why do you even need to quit? Just say, okay. Yes, I was hangry. Yes, I was waiting. Yes, my, there were people I turned down to collab because of this, because I left the day for her. So uh, there's someone else I could have seen. Um, again, time is really important while I'm there, but it also, there is an element of my attachment disorder showing through. I, I didn't want to accept that. I couldn't say, oh, whatever i was like no i need to know why what did i do i need to be liked i need to be accepted so that is where some of that played into as well i'm 26 7, 27 years old i need to just say okay i was over overtaken with um not accepting rejection or no or feeling left and it's not because i'm a predator it's not because I have sexual tendencies. It's not because I'm, I'm a master manipulator trying to convince everyone of something. It's because I don't like being ghosted and I take it a lot harder than other people for various different reasons. And I am sorry for that because I can understand how that would trigger whatever she went through with whoever she went through. Her sexual assault, her whatever happened I can understand from her perspective, getting messages like, okay, well, let's reschedule. I said that because I knew she wouldn't want to reschedule. So I was kind of, I was literally playing with her. I'm like, she's not, I was literally texting. I was calling Zach at the same time. I told him, I was like, I knew she's not going to, I know she's not going to say she's going to reschedule. This is her way of getting out of it without giving like a sincere answer. And I already knew she didn't like me. Zach told me, I just... From her perspective, from her perspective, I can understand, I'm trying to imagine right now being assaulted, feeling powerless, having people manipulate you into doing something you never agreed to. I can understand those emotions coming up. I couldn't let it go. I couldn't let it go with Trisha. I mean, three years later, I was still upset by it. Three years later. And I'm embarrassed by that. I am. I'm embarrassed that I can't be normal and just be like, well, I'll think of you. I'll talk to you whenever. I just, um, it's a very intense part of my personality. I'm an intense person. I'm, um, but that's something I need to take responsibility for. And that's something I need to learn how to control better. And I honestly feel like I need medicine for that. Um, I used to be on lots of different medicine growing up. And I'm trying to think of, what I was on helped with that aspect? I don't think so. Um, but that's where it's coming from. And I'm very, very, very sorry for making her feel like 
getting flashbacks to when someone convinced her not to say no or someone pressured her into doing sexual activities. I'm sorry that I brought, I sprung, I instigated, I ignited those feelings and memories. I'm sorry, I had no idea. I had no way of knowing she didn't tell me. And I was pissed. And I also have a problem being rejected. Why do you think I make all these videos searching for um, acceptance on the computer? Um, that's my own issue. And um, I'm sorry. I am so sorry to her for that. And I am also very, very sorry to the people I tagged in that in and out of sleep post. I feel like I should end the video. I'm not sure what else to say. All I know is that my life is really messed up right now where I'm having sponsors questioning if they're gonna work with me. I'm having people all around the world call me a predator and a harasser and a groomer and just the amount, the amount of bullying, ironically, that I'm getting, that Honey's getting, that people are getting, when I'm sorry, I reacted poorly to her standing me up. I shouldn't have messaged and called that many times, but I wanted to feel a little bit better. If she was a fr I, I oh, our developing friendship, as she said in her text, for the sake of her developing friendship, I'm like, well, if you're de trying to develop a friendship, if you'd say, hey, Nick, this is what's really up. I want to voice it to you, not, you know, keep you wondering. Like, just, you know what I mean? It really wasn't that big of an issue, but now it's been blown up into this whole thing across the whole internet. And I'm gonna lose money, I'm gonna lose business, I'm gonna lose support, I'm gonna lose trust. And again, it's one thing to say, oh, someone's stupid or someone's mean or someone's a bitch or people say things on the internet like, oh, she's a liar, oh, well, he's this. It's another thing when you pull in the Me Too, move, Me Too movement, when you pull in sexual assault, sexual trauma, when you start listing off definitions for master manipulators and sexual predators and predatory tendencies, as she said, and even saying like the guy didn't want your dick, it's like, this hurts. I'm sorry, I know she was a victim, I'm not victimizing or making fun of the victim or whatever. I'm sorry. No one deserves that to happen to them. But why is this being thrown back to me? I don't know. And I don't even know what to do right now. I am in such distress. Um, my image, my reputation is being damaged left and right. And people are just going off of it. And it's snowballing and dominoing around the whole world. People in my real life are reaching out saying, what did you do to this girl? And there's people who don't even know me who are saying that that was me on top of her. And all of the things she implied, I'm just so upset. I just typed in Nikocado Avocado on YouTube five, six minutes ago when I went to go get some water. And there's people who are saying I belong in jail. There's people saying that they, the police need to be contacted. There's, it's like, did they, she knows, I, she knows what she was doing. That's not an accident. That's not an accident at all. Which is why the tags have Nikocado Avocado, hi, I know you see this. Which is why she liked my post about exposing her. Which is why she deliberately told me to look at her and the, it feels like I was set up. It's really crazy. It, it feels so calculated in our video yesterday. Oh, I'm ready to move on. Hee <laughs> hee, I'm so happy. Giggling, I'm thinking like, what the heck is so funny? Meanwhile, I'm over here thinking like, do I have a future on YouTube? Do I have a future off YouTube? Someone searches me, an employer, they see all these titles about me. I don't know, even know how to conclude this video. I'm really upset. I'm really shaken. I'm, I don't know what to do. Look at my videos. It looks like I friggin' killed someone. <sighs> and again, I am so sorry that she had a sexual trauma, a sexual abuse, a sexual harassment, a sexual something. I am so sorry to my friends that I tagged in the in and out of sleep joke. I'm sorry. I literally wasn't thinking. I wasn't thinking. Um, and I don't know what to do. I, I don't know what else to say. She lied about me taking photos in her house. She lied about me pressuring her to talk about Veronica. That was her idea 
her plan. She talked about it over and over. She lied about never wanting to talk about Veronica, where I can show you she literally wanted to make a whole documentary. It was that bad, you guys. It was that bad. Again, being accused of being a predator is something very, very serious, and that is something that um, no matter what I say, I can't make pe people are going to think I'm just doing this as like a um, to save face or like a PR stunt. I just feel so, I feel manipulated, manipulated. And for me to even question, looks like I'm, um, shaming women or I'm, um, you know, discrediting victims. That's not what this is about. I'm not discrediting that. I swear. I swear I'm not. I don't know. She said she's over it and she's happy. She's making money. She's getting purchases on her merchandise. She's get her views. She got 200,000. So she seems really happy. Um, she's laughing and smiling and saying she already said she's moved on. So I'm over here like, wow, how do I recover from this? Um, and I don't know what to do. So that's all. I don't know when I'll make a video again, but I've been posting mostly pre-recorded stuff, um, especially on my third channel. Everything's been pre-recorded. I literally can't sit down and talk. I, 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 I can't, I, I just, um, I'm trying. Those of you who, I don't, I don't even know what to say. Goodbye. That's my truth. That's my side of things. And I'll let you determine what you think. But please stop, 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 stop for the love of God. Stop calling me a predator. Stop calling me manipulative. Stop calling me a groomer. The amount of people who are making videos call me a groomer. And of you can't say she had no idea that would be taken out that way. You just look at how it was edited. Look at the beginning. Look at everything. The whole the script, the description, everything. It was so deliberate. And, um... That's my truth. That's my side of things. So I'll see you when I'm ready to talk again. Bye-bye.